Hi everyone, my name is Sajin, and today we'll be discussing isometric transformation invariant and equivariant graph convolutional networks. So what are isometric transformations? Isometric transformations are shape-preserving movements in a given space of the data, such as translation, rotation, dilation, and reflection. So what's translation invariance? To illustrate invariance, I'll use classification as our model or function of interest, um, represented as f of x. So given this image on the left-hand side, our model um, classifies this image to be a cat. And with the transformation, despite moving the cat to the left-hand side of the in input space, the model still returns cat. And since the output hasn't changed, despite the transformation of um, the input data, um, this is considered translation invariant or transformation invariant. Um, so when f of x is equal to the f of the transformed x, that's how we will define transformation invariance. So to illustrate equivariance, we're going to use segmentation this time around. Um, so given this image on the left-hand side, our model outputs the mask of the area it detects as the cat. And so this is our segmentation on the original input. Now if we translate our cat to the left, then we get this new segmentation output. But we can note that the output of this uh, translated input is actually the same as translating the original output. So translation or transformation equivariance is when the transformation of f of x is equal to the f of the transformed x. The paper introduces three main contributions. Um, it introduces the concept of ISO-GCNs, um, which construct isometric transformation invariant and equivariant GCNs, and they do so through the introduction of a novel adjacency matrix, ISO-adjacency matrix. They demonstrate that their method is competitive with state-of-the-art um, models in tasks related to physical simulations, and notably, they um, show that their method is highly scalable and computationally efficient, um, and therefore achieves inference faster than conventional element analysis. Graph convolutional networks are simplification of message passing GNNs, and they increase the computational efficiency by linearizing the operation. Here we have um, the output of a layer is the adjacency matrix multiplied by the input multiplied by the weight um, wrapped around by a nonlinearity. Um, so you can see the operation here is just a straightforward uh, set of multiplications, um, and we're able to get the output. So this allows um, this graph uh, computation with graph structured data to be very efficient. Previous work that tackled uh, invariant and equivariant, uh, transformation invariant equivariance um, were mainly CNN based. Um, so group equivariant CNNs and 3D steerable CNNs were focused on rotating and reorienting kernels to be rotation invariant. Um, then in 2018, um, Thomas et al. introduced tensor field networks to introduce a rotation and translation equivariant neural network specifically for point cloud data. And they did this by using 3D spherical harmonics. And in 2020, um, there was a twi uh, there was an introduction of the paper SE3 transformers, which was essentially tensor field networks with self-attention attached. And this showed very impressive performance. And tensor field networks and SE3 transformers will be the baselines we'll be comparing our ISO GCN to. So let's dive into ISO adjacency matrix, really the key um, concept that defines this whole method. Um, so here we have ISO adjacency matrix G defined um, in the space of uh, v number of vertices by v by d, which is the Euclidean dimension of the data. So we're going to look at just g i j, which is just one slice of the matrix between vertex i and j. And g i j is defined as the sum of k and l, which are a set of vertices, um, but k cannot be equal to l. So there's a key assumption that there are no self loops. Um, and this, the sum of, this is the sum of an untrainable rank two tensor t, which is um, transformation invariant and orthogonally transformation equivariant multiplied by the difference between the two data points. So what is this untrainable uh, rank two tensor? So if we look at the slice of gij in this example b, t can essentially be substituted as Kronecker delta il, Kronecker delta jk multiplied by the adjacency matrix and an identity matrix, which really just cancels out to the adjacency matrix. Um, and so what we're really having here is just the adjacency matrix multiplied by the difference between the two data points. So as you can see, it's really just the adjacency matrix propagated across each dimension of the data points. So we can understand the ISO adjacency matrix to be a weighted adjacency matrix for each direction of the data, and it reflects spatial information, um, whereas a usual weighted adjacency matrix won't be able to reflect and contain the spatially, spatial information because it only has one adjacency matrix. So here's our first proposition that's introduced, which is just saying that the ISO adjacency matrix 
Um, once you transform it with translation and orthogonal transformation, it results in an orthogonally equivariant um, and uh, out of the lack of T, uh, implying translationally invariant um, ISO adjacency matrix. Now there's three more operations we need to note, and these are the key operations that will actually construct individual ISO GCN layers um, and the subsequent propositions of the paper to make that happen. So the first one is convolution. So um, we take a kernel, we slide it over the input, and we convolve it. But for graphs, convolutions occur with connected nodes, and it does so efficiently by just multiplying with the adjacency matrix, um, which leaves out the disconnected nodes as zero. And then we have contraction, which is just another word for dot product. Um, and you can see that in the formula below. And lastly, we have the tensor product, which is, as the name would suggest, just the tensor product. And that leads us to our second proposition, which is that an isoadjacency matrix contracted with itself results in an isometric transformation invariance um, property. And the paper goes on to prove that um, if we try the transformation of G contracted with itself, it gives us this. And um, if based on proposition one that we remembered, um, and now we're going to rearrange it. And then we see that the two orthogonal transformations are beside each other. And out of the property of orthogonal matrix, this turns into an identity, which just goes away. And as you can see, this final result is just the definition of the contraction of G that we first defined. And then we have, oh, and uh, bringing it back to the example of the cat, um, essentially, if we multiply a given function and we multiply it by G contracted with itself, um, despite the transformation of the data itself, it still gives us the same output. And then we have proposition three, which is that the tensor product of isoadjacency matrices result in isometric transformation equivariance. Um, so how are we going to prove this? So we do the transformation of the tensor product, which results in this. Um, and then once we rearrange, we can see that the orthogonal um, transformations are wrapping around the outside of the tensor product, um, which is just the coordinate transformation of a rank two tensor, which in other words, means that it's equivariant to the orthogonal transformation. Come back to the example of the cat, uh, essentially this orthogonal transformation is, as the inputs transform, the output transforms the same way. In order to generalize our proposition to tensors higher than rank two, we can simply solve this by using pth tensor powers of the isoadjacency matrix with itself. And this allows us to use the property of equivariance with higher rank tensors. Now we can define the isoGCN invariance layer. So you can see that it's defined as the ISO adjacency matrix contracted with itself, multiplied by the input and by the trainable weights wrapped around a nonlinearity. And if we replace the G contraction of itself as L, we can see that this is very similar to the way a normal GCN layer was defined, except instead of the adjacency matrix, this is substituted by L. It's worth noting that both L and A here are untrainable predefined matrices, and the authors have achieved um, isometric transformation equivariance and invariance by using by just defining a novel adjacency matrix, G. So for tensor ranks greater than zero, we want to apply the linear transformation, then a convolution, and then a tensor product. However, if we then apply the nonlinear activation on top, and this would distort the isometry. So here we have a simple animation of hidden units of a very simple multilayer perceptron. Um, so at first, you can see the input is just being linearly transformed um, in itself. Um, it kind of looks like it's just kind of rotating, and it the isometry of the data landscape is preserved. However, then when the nonlinear activation kicks in, this resolves the landscape to distort and isometric equivariance is no longer preserved through the layers. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can just give up using nonlinear activations because otherwise we would lose out on a lot of predictive performance. So the trick that the authors came up with, it, the solution that the authors came up with is to convert the input into a rank zero tensor, then apply the nonlinear activation to the rank zero tensor input and then we multiply it with a higher rank tensor. So here we have the definition of an isoGCN equivariant layer. So this first part is the input tensor being converted into rank zero, then the nonlinearity applied. And the second part is the isometric transformation equivariant um, learning, from, which elevates the um, rank of the data from M to L. And this is defined as, as we saw earlier, the pth tensor power of the isoadjacency matrix. And this is going to be the final definition of our isoGCN equivariant layer. However, this layer that we've defined as is, is only translation invariant. So in order to make it equivariant, we define the reference vertex, we compute the output of this layer, and then we add the reference vertex fine, uh, back in. So we have two experiments to dive into. 
The first one is modeling differential operators, and the second one is um, simulating anisotropic heat equations. So they generated a pseudo 2D grid mesh of one cell in the Z direction and 10 to 100 cells in X, Y directions. They generated the scalar fields on the grid meshes based on the cells. And then they've calculated the gradient, the Laplacian, and the Hessian fields. And so the four tasks that they wanted the model to learn is converting from scalar fields to gradient or Hessian, and going from the gradient field to the Laplacian or the Hessian. And here are the defined um, neural networks that they use for these tasks. And you can see that the structure is very similar to just what a graph convolutional network would be. However, instead of the GCN layer, they've just swapped it out for an ISO GCN layer. Um, so this kind of shows how modular uh, the layer that they've defined is and how flexible it can fit into new architectures. And so here are the visual results of uh, the differential operator data set experiment. Um, so the top row is the gradient field, and the bottom row is a test error between the ground truth and their output. And we can see that um, despite the author's attempts, that the SE3 transformer actually performs better um, in all of the tasks that it didn't run out of memory on. Um, however, ISO GCNs and TFNs aren't that far behind either. Um, then the author adds that, but the author then, mm, And now diving into the second experiment, the anisotropic nonlinear heat equation. So they grabbed CAD objects from the ABC data set, and they generated first order tetrahedral meshes um, using the GMSH software. Um, they then set the temperature and anisotropic thermal conductivity, and they conducted finite element analysis to get the ground truth um, that you see on the left-hand side here. Um, and the software they use is called Front ISTR, which will also be used as a benchmark. And this is their model for this experiment. And we can see that um, in, in this experiment that the ISO GCN performs significantly better than the tensor field network and the SE3 transformer. Um, what's interesting though is that all, most of the GCM methods themselves already perform better than the TFN and SE3 transformer. And diving once again into the inference times, we can see that the ISO GCN is fastest, um, even faster than the finite element analysis the authors conducted to generate the ground truth labels. Um, you can see that the front ISTR, the performance um, is very good for when delta t equals 0 0.5. And this is because it can calculate interactions between vertices that are extremely distant from each other. And ISO GCN could increase the number of hops to match the interactions that uh, the front ISTR looks at at this level, but would lead to longer computational time. So in conclusion, the main application of ISO GCN um, is that it is capable of learning physical simulations there's very short computational time and it's very efficient as the authors have shown. Um, and they do so in an isometric transformation invariant and equivariant manner as they've proven through their propositions. So the main pitch is that this is a new type of um, doing isometric transformation invariance equivariant uh, models, but while being significantly more memory efficient than TFNs and SE3 transformers. There are some limitations that this paper encounters, the first of which are baked into the model design, which are the key assumptions that the ISO GCM makes when constructing their ISO adjacency matrices. So the first one is that the attributes are associated with vertices and not edges. And secondly, that the graphs do not contain self loops. And these assumptions might limit the variety of applications that ISO GCM could be used for. The second one is that the SE3 transformer actually did better than the ISO GCN in the differential operator experiment. Um, the only time the ISO GCN did better was when the SE3 transformer ran out of memory and the ISO GCN doesn't convincingly perform better than the TFN either. And lastly, one of the reviewers mentioned that there are no experiments done with isometric transformation, which is really the key contribution of this paper. And this property that the authors pitch is only proven using propositions and proofs. So we would love to see um, additional experiments done with more conventional um, experiments um, and data sets to really show their method and prove this property of isometric transformation invariance and equivariance. So thanks for listening, and I hope you guys enjoy the video.